Salutation, Serene Eminence here. The following is essentially a follow-up to the initial Carvertize video, where in which I conducted an extensive explication regarding the Carvertize company and the methodology upholding the ways in which they generate impressions for companies that they are working in accordance with. I also assured to do an in-depth discussion regarding the sign-up process. I shall have all pertinent links below in the description if you are interested in signing up to work in accordance with the Carvertize company. I shall also provide pertinent timestamps if you'd like to skip forward to various topics that you are particularly interested in and any particular inquiries that you have so that you may salvage your time accordingly. Today, however, I shall be going over all of the moments leading up to actual vehicle wrap installment, as well as all correspondence subsequent to the wrap and prior to the wrap. And I shall also be providing in-depth information regarding remittance of payment, uh, specifically direct deposit, and I'll also go over various correspondence that I received via the actual Carver Ties app subsequent to installment. So the day before my wrap, I was recommended to secure a car cleansing so that the actual installment may be imprinted seamlessly on my actual car. So I moved forward with securing my necessary car cleansing. I also secured necessary gas so that I may have a full tank because I was traversing to Long Beach, specifically Lakewood, California, which is a little over an hour away from me. So the next day, I sure to leave around two hours early so that I may take into account traffic buildup as well as grant myself time to acclimate to the vicinity for which I was going to be receiving my wrap, as well as to secure any necessary footage that I might require. It wasn't a packed area. It was an industrial area, basically an office park. So it was fairly quaint, which I appreciated. So I did arrive around 45 minutes early to the wrap locale and upon my arrival around 15 minutes later i did receive an email from carvertize reiterating that i do have an appointment on this day at this locale and it was rhetorical there was no need to respond they just wanted to refresh your memory if you happen to forget and about 10 minutes after that, I received a call from a Carvertize representative and they basically reiterated the same thing that was divulged via the email. And I basically informed the representative that I had already arrived. So I shall be in accordance with the appointment that I did confirm. Uh, she also mentioned to me that I shall receive an email 24 hours after my wrap installment that will detail basically welcoming me to the Carvertize campaign and it will detail how I will set up my direct deposit as well as um, how I will set up my actual profile via the Carvertize application as well as detailing how to send proof of the actual installment via via photographs so that was a quick correspondence um she asked if i had any more questions and i didn't subsequent to that call i made sure to go straight into the locale um there was only one uh receptionist i didn't see any other employees but i believe they were further in the back the actual installers or graphic designers or what have you and it was a extremely simple process um it we barely even spoke um she barely asked me anything she just confirmed that my name was diamond i asked if she needed my license or anything to confirm that i am who i am and she did not 
She just requested my keys and asked me to sit in the waiting room. She did ask if I would like any refreshments, but I had already had some water on hand and I had breakfast before. So I did not accept. The waiting room was empty. There was an individual that left before me, like 20 minutes before me. And I was early for my wrap, but they were able to start the installation process um, early um, because no one else was there. So I only waited for around 20 minutes uh, for my wrap to be installed. And this was at the location, the Speed Pro Long Beach location. And they specialize in car wraps and um, larger graphic designs for, for companies. So it was a very stress-free process, essentially. And as far as exiting, um, I did speak to the receptionist and ask her why I wasn't able to choose what was going to be imprinted on my car. And she mentioned that this was a campaign that only had one advertisement and there wasn't any variations and there wasn't any other company to work in accordance with. It's only in accordance with Morgan and Morgan. And I didn't look into Morgan and Morgan prior to the actual uh, wrap. Um, so I didn't look into it until after the fact, but I can say I was a little off put from seeing a bare breasted man, bare chested, man upon either side of my actual vehicle i wasn't expecting that but then again they definitely got the interest factor because it is going to garner and it has garnered a great deal of uh, attention it is simply a man that's laying on a blow up bed within the water. So he's exceedingly calm and relaxed. And next to it, it says, um, recovered a cool 15 billion. I do like the 15 billion on my car because I do like being in accordance with abundance. So there's no qualms there. Um, but it would have been nice to gain insight into the actual picture prior to it being on my car, as well as even being handed a brochure or have had some video of the campaign um, playing while I was actually in the waiting room, just so I would have more insight. But all of the onus is on you for um, going into deeper research as far as the company and everything of the sort. But Actually, before I went in to do like a thorough research, um, thoroughly researching the company, like literally before I typed in Morgan and Morgan, I had never typed in Morgan and Morgan or even uttered the words um, whilst my phone was around. But I was watching Wham Bam Tesla Cam, um, where in which he basically shows Tesla cam footage of various accidents and road rage against Tesla drivers. And I think that road rage stems from being against EVs in general, as well as being staunchly against Elon Musk. Like it's really appalling seeing the direct um, vitriol towards these Tesla drivers. Like. They throw ice cream at their cars. Um, big pickup trucks will roll coal on them. It's very strange because they're not actually targeting the actual people that are in charge of creating these EVs or you know Elon Musk in general, but they're targeting the individuals that are investing in the company, I guess, but it's really sickening. Um, in any event, I was watching Wham Bam Tesla Clam and uh, he was doing a, it was, you know, where they do the, the ads and they get paid to promote the ad. It was Morgan and Morgan and it was promoting, um, cause Morgan and Morgan is an injury uh, law firm. They specialize in injury law cases. Um, and that spans from malpractice all the way to car accidents, slip and falls, 
and any incidents outside of that. And um, he was advertising that you could gain, you know, money for your um, losses during an accident. And it was a whole spiel on what Morgan and Morgan was. It was like the universe caught up to my inquiry before me and prior to me even speaking it or typing it out. So I found that very interesting. And so I gained insight before I even knew about it. But so the actual uh, rap process was very simple and very straightforward. And after I did my research, after I saw the Wham Bam Tesla Cam advertisement, I realized that the face of the man is actually the head of the Morgan and Morgan company. His last name is Morgan. And apparently he works in tandem with that may be his wife, I'm not sure as well as his three sons. But the body of the man is actually a chiseled physique of a younger man. So I don't know, it's really interesting. If I were to move forward with a company, I would prefer them to be more professional, honestly. I wouldn't want to see a half naked man and I wouldn't, um, that just wouldn't make me feel like I'm working with someone that wouldn't try to get over on me. I don't know because the advertisement is like using psychological tricks to get your attention so that you may move forward with their business. But I don't like psychological tricks. I would prefer someone be in their stance as they are, preferably a professional stance and remain in accordance with that. But it has been garnering a lot of attention. So it's garnering the attention of individuals for whom they are meant to garner. So that is what that is. So on the following day, after I received my wrap, I received the welcome email that the Carver Ties representative mentioned that I would, and it stated that I should send proof that I've been wrapped and that my payment will not be made unless I follow these steps, and that was all in caps. So as far as the proof of installment, I was asked to take a photo of the car, left, right, front, and back, and specifically the back because they want to link your actual um, driver's license to your profile and they do provide the link for you to upload your wrapped car and they did prompt me to download the Carvertize app. I had already downloaded the Carvertize app while I was waiting in the parking lot before the Carvertize representative even called me and before she sent me the actual email because I knew that would be pertinent. And if it's your first time utilizing the Carvertize app, which it is usually, but I do remember when I was signing up, I did download the app, but I wasn't approved for any campaign. So there was nothing there. There were no correspondence there. So there was no point in me having the app installed on my phone. So I deleted it. So your username is going to be your email and your password is going to be whatever password you choose. And you have to make sure your app is set up correctly and you have to allow Carvertize to use your location services in the background so that they may automatically detect your mileage. It's how they show advertisers the value of a driver's driving routine and how they also get more campaigns for individuals to participate in. So you are to assure to follow the prompts on your device to always allow location settings. So you would click allow for Carvertize specifically. And you should also make sure that your notifications are on immediate so that you're able to receive all notifications um, and notifications for bonus opportunities, which I did receive a bonus opportunity today, which is three days after I had my car wrapped. And once you set everything up right in your Carvertize app, everything should be on green and i do t i will talk about this more towards the end of the video but everything should be on green and it should say um app status running location services always notifications granted and motion and fitness granted so everything should be green it should be a go as far as setting up direct deposit 
you'll receive a direct deposit invitation email from Carver Ties. It says 48 to 72 hours after your wrap appointment, but I received my email 15 minutes after I received the welcome email. So it was exactly 24 hours after my wrap for both of the email correspondence. So it's less than 48 to 72 hours. So I noticed that they overextend they give you a longer duration because even for the wrap they said it would take an hour but only took like 20 minutes for me so when you set up direct deposit this is how you will receive all of your payments including bonus pay and all payments are distributed after 30 days and if you've driven for carver ties before then you don't need to set up your direct deposit and you won't receive an invite As far as the email regarding confirming your direct deposit, the first step is going to be to click the link provided via the email. Then you move forward with registration and you'll input your email address, your password, and there will be a security question and an answer. You then will move forward with two-step verification via selecting country code and your phone number and then the code will be sent to your phone number for them to verify it. And this is in order to increase your account security and everything like that. The next step will be to enter your contact information just as it appears on your bank records. You will select if you are an individual or a company. I did choose that I was a company. I put Serene Eminence consultancy then you'll put your contact email your phone number your first name your middle name your last name and your address then you move forward with your payment method whether that be direct deposit ACH or check or PayPal and of course I chose direct deposit I did think about check but that may take too long and I actually did utilize my uber pro account to set up my direct deposit not my actual bank because i am done with bank of america and i do have previous videos <clears throat> uh, specifically my video where i discussed that i was my account was fraudulently infiltrated by a scammer and my video where in which i compare the uber pro card with the uber debit card and so you may tune into those if you're interested in seeing my qualms with my banking institution. So, which is why I'm using my Uber Pro Card banking institution. I'm just gonna keep everything in there to minimize my issues. And so I put in my bank name and I believe the make bank name for Uber Pro Card is Evolve Bank and Trust. I put in my routing number, my account number, and the account type. I put checking, and then you will agree to terms and services as well as read the privacy policy and agree to that as well. You will then move forward with your tax forms and specifically your W-9 form. You put your name, whether you're an individual or a company. I put Serene Eminence Consultancy, um, and you put your business name if that's different than above. Then you'll check if you're an individual sole proprietor, if you're a single member LLC, C Corp, S Corp partnership, trust or estate or a limited liability company. Then you'll move forward with exemption codes if per pertinent, and then your tax identification number, and that would either be your TIN or your SSN. And then you move forward with your documentation where in which you provide a copy of your driver's license and your proof of insurance and you simply uh, take photographs and upload them just as you take photographs and upload your pictures of your left right front and back of your car it's very very easy and actually that's the entirety of the process subsequent to your install. So that's the direct deposit uh, sign up and the app application sign up. And that's, that's pretty much your introduction after you receive the install. So three days later, which is today on the 9th, I received in app assignments and I received a total of two. And so 
I did make sure to take screenshots because the assignments disappear once they are complete and done. Luckily, I am an incessant screenshotter, so I have the proof. <laughs> And so the first assignment was setting up the Carvertize application properly, where in which I already discussed that. And the task is to make sure that all permissions are set correctly. And as I mentioned, within your app, if everything is a go, your app status should say running, your location services should say always, and your notifications should say granted, and your motion and fitness should also say granted so that they may monitor your driving and make sure you're in the locales for which you are supposed to be and also when they give you a targeted directive that you're in that locale and as well as making sure that you are accruing the necessary 900 miles per month so within my application settings on my actual iphone i put location um as always location always on motion and fitness always on and my notifications as immediate to be in accordance with the application um, requirements and the next application after i the next assignment after i assured that that was done i was prompted to move forward with the prompt of how i can start getting paid and to start getting paid you have to send proof of your photos now we already sent proof of our photos via the link that they gave us but i guess to cover their bases and to make sure it's actually still on maybe you're like i don't like this because at one point i was thinking i really don't like this because so many eyes are on my vehicle and so many eyes are on me and i just i don't really like that guy being on my own car but if you take it off early, you're charged like 350, so or something like that, around 300. So I'm just going to keep it on. I mean, it's not that appalling, but I'm just a very specific entity. But um, yeah, so we already sent the proof of the photos, but they want you to send proof again via the app, I guess, to further confirm and to put it in association with your profile. So I took photos of the front left back and right this morning and then once I completed it it was erased from my task list also this morning I received an email regarding an additional Carver ties opportunity to gain $40 cash and this was a targeted driving opportunity they want you to take 10 or more different photos at the LAX airport and I specifically despise LAX because it's too large, it's too crowded, it's traffic beyond belief. I specifically go to smaller airports, specifically the Burbank Airport or maybe like Orange County Airport. Orange County is fairly big too, but Los Angeles County is unbearable and I don't like it. Um, so they essentially want you to go there and they want you to take 10 photos around the ride share area or anywhere specifically set where there's a lot of people and it has to be around a lot of people so that they can make sure that you are gaining the proper amount of visibility so i wonder like if you take a picture and it's not around a lot of people if you would even get the 40 dollars because i always like to take like shortcuts around stuff and kind of do my own thing and I would probably go when there's like no one there and take pictures, but then that wouldn't be in accordance with their a lot of people requirements. So then I would waste my time. And also LAX is fairly far from me. So the, the amount of gas I'm utilizing to go there would almost be half of that. Plus I'm going to be like out of my element. And I just don't think it's worth it. I won't be doing it but I will be making sure, like I'm going to use this to my benefit. Whenever they ask, whenever they provide me with an opportunity to make a certain amount, I'm going to just make sure I make that amount plus double when I'm working Uber, so that in my mind I kind of already made it, but not in accordance with what they want me to do. So, yeah. So that is one of the extra opportunities that you may get to make over the a minimum of 100 but we'll see what other opportunities they come up with and I, so sh I shall share them with you all um, as they arise especially if I actually engage in one and they also sent me an email today asking me to 
do a review of my experience thus far and they said if you review positively then you where the company is basically more likely to get more campaigns in the area because more of the couriers or drivers or commuters are enjoying the campaign and it's having the proper effect then they are going to be able to garner more campaigns in that area and obviously more campaigns means more money for you but not necessarily because you may not be specifically always approved just because there's a campaign so so now i'm just going to be going over my personal perceptivity that i garnered while i was um actually having the experience of having this individual installed on the face either face of my car so i have to get used to the attention basically attention acclimation if you've watched any of my other videos i am an introvert at heart i'm extroverted in arenas that fuel me and that are alignment with how i operate so usually quaint spaces or sophisticated spaces or um formal spaces um something like that or when i'm with someone that i really really enjoy their company and we really like get each other and understand each other that i can be a little bit more exuberant and expressive but in general i'm introverted and i don't like a lot of attention i only like attention from specific individuals um so a lot of individuals of course are staring at me <laughs> In this they're staring at the advertisement but they're also staring at the person in accordance with the advertisement so I have to get used to these eyes being on myself and the vehicle and I actually had an individual intrude upon my space I was parked in a parking lot I was actually just about to return something via Amazon to the UPS store and an older Caucasian female uh, knocked vigorously on my car window asking me about the actual advertisement how much i get paid for it um what is the advertisement related to and she went into um i didn't know what it was related to because i didn't actually do thorough research and i didn't actually know that they worked with malpractice suits i only thought they worked with like car injuries like car accidents i just assumed that so this was before i did my thorough research uh, and I say that because she was telling me that she recently had, not recently, like years ago, she had surgery and she ended up with a collapsed lung. So basically she had a, a malpractice suit on her hand and nobody, no attorneys would take the case for whatever reason. And she was desperately seeking some sort of relief, but I did not know that this particular law firm dealt with malpractice so I felt bad that I wasn't able to provide her with some sort of relief but she was like talking to me around 30 minutes about um the deep despair and unsettling bodily feelings that she has to deal with and dealing with the collapsed lung situation um and I'm used to individuals actually telling me their life story and things that they're going through especially since I used to be employed as a social worker. But in general, I have a compassionate healing aura and I inherently listen to individuals. So if you have an individual that's compassionately listening, then you're going to have the reciprocal of someone joyously discussing <laughs> whatever that it is that they're going through. That's just the nature of balance so that is something to be aware of that you may have individuals literally intruding upon your space or just visually intruding upon your space so as i mentioned before i think it would be great if they did have a briefing regarding the company when you're actually getting it installed it doesn't even have to be anything extensive as the actual video or advertisement of the company playing like i mentioned on a TV while you're in the waiting room. It could also simply just be a brochure or even an email letting you know what the company is and what it is that they do, essentially, just to give you a heads up. And even a card would be nice because the only call to action that they have 
on the actual advertisement is Dow Pound Law, which is a simple, straightforward call to action, but I don't, with all the other stuff going on on the advertisement, that is actually not obvious. And the actual location, which is in downtown Los Angeles, is very small. So the important stuff I feel like is really small and the stuff that grabs your attention is really big. But you don't really have time to get information on the stuff that you need. So I don't know, like it makes me really think more about marketing and how they manipulate to basically just grab your attention. But they're not actually being in alignment with what it is that they're wanting, which is for you to move forward and be able to get in touch with the actual company. So they're kind of operating backwards, um, in my opinion. Um, but they should also provide us with cards and flyers um, if anyone is interested, um, not just individuals that do actual Uber driving of individuals and Lyft driving, not like Uber Eats like I do Uber Eats. Um, they should have actual flyers and cards for people to give out. But as far as the psychological aspect, I do wonder what individuals initial impression is upon first glance of the advertisement. Like I wonder what they're literally first thinking. Um, I'm curious what individuals per perspective of me is in relation to the advertisement. Like what do they think about me in association with this bare breasted Caucasian male with a chiseled physique? on my car like what do they think about me and i'm curious does it appeal to older populations as an inspiration to rekindle their glory days as a representation of health and vigor now i do specifically work in a targeted area on my own accord which is westlake village and that is an older population and familial population so i wonder if the families are off put by this bare-breasted man um, and i wonder if even the older individuals are a little bit off put by it but i'm definitely even more so an outlier because i'm the only one in this area in this vicinity with a plastered advertising advertisement on my car i am one of the only aside from like high schoolers i'm like one of the only young adults in the area because it is an older population uh, i am a courier it is very low amounts of uber eats couriers or door dashers in that area and um i just increased my outlier esque essence in that vicinity so yay lucky me so more attention in every facet <laughs> it's like i'm just like screaming for more attention so yeah i wonder if anyone even finds it like lustful like if they like get this lustful sensation because i remember i was watching this um i wasn't watching it it came up on my youtube when i was watching youtube and it was like let's talk about sex um or this is better than sex but the song was let's talk about sex and it was just about like i think it was mascara and it's like i turned it off immediately because i'm like this has nothing to do with anything like are you saying like people should wear this to gain more sexual attention I just don't get where people are going with it. I mean, I get that you're trying to grab people's attention, but I just don't think everything has to be about sex. I really don't. I think people really need to hone in what on what matters so that you can get to the point and get people to act on what it is that you want them to act on if they are in alignment with said product. So as far as the primers, I do think it lends towards restoration of excellent health in stark contrast to being injured. So it is a healthy older man, even though that's not his body. It does lend towards the aspect of, oh, you have the capability of being restored even if you are in an injured state or have been in an injured state. It lends towards, it lends towards recovery of finances and contrast to the financial losses endured due to incidents of injury. So the inscription of a cool $15 billion recovered lets you know that they have recovered an enormous amount of money and you may be next and you may add on to that 15 billion and that 15 billion may be yours. And that's in stark contrast to the zero amount of dollars that you have received thus far in relation to the injury that you have endured. I do believe that it 
lends towards the reclaiming a calm, cool, and collected demeanor in contrast to the tumultuous frustration that ensues subsequent to incidences of injury. So if you've been through any type of injury, I mean, I was actually in a car accident and I broke my foot. Um, I didn't receive any, I didn't receive any money. <laughs> I think about it, I didn't receive anything. I was just glad to be alive. And it was during the time I was getting my master's and I couldn't go to school. Um, it was during the time I was doing my dissertation, so I had all the time in the world to think on an original topic for me to delve into and conduct a thorough investigation and add unto the actual subject matter of a specific area of thought, which was dispositional optimism and victimization. But that's besides the point. <laughs> so I had more time. So I was finding the positives, finding the silver lining after breaking my foot in a car accident. But so the point is, I can relate to the idea of being frustrated and being upset. And so seeing a man calmly laying on a bubble bed floating on water next to a 15 billion dollar sign with his shades on it's like the epitome of cool calm and collected and with a lovely physique it's like people want you people are attracted you're attractive and you're calm and cool and collected so it's like that contrast of how you are if you are in that state or have experienced an injury i think it it, it plays off of that and it it does that well and so it also essentially gives you the idea that you can re reconnect with resolution amidst the no solutions that you've had when you've gone through any type of injury or slip and fall or incidents of injury in general. So there are aspects that work, but if I was a marketing individual or a brander, I don't know, maybe I would have to look more into that realm of thought to really see um, the neuropsychology of what actually works so that you may funnel more people into being interested in the actual value of the product or service that you have to offer. So that's my little psychological perspective spiel on the advertisement angle, if you will. And so I was just thinking that it essentially took four companies to make this manifest. So it took Carvertize and in tandem with Uber Eats or any variant of being a courier or variant of being a driver or commuter. And it also took the relation between Speed Pro and Morgan and Morgan to make the actual installment happen. And so these efforts are basically highly collective and I can only imagine that on a larger scale, larger enterprises work with a plethora of um, networks and connections to make things happen. So I don't know, it just opens you, opens your mind up to greater possibilities and greater understandings. Whenever I'm involved with any company or anything for that matter, I love to fully immerse myself in it if it's in accordance with my operating system. Um, but just in general, the, the information behind the actual company and what it stands for and mainly how it operates um, always intrigues me. So that was essentially my overview individuals. There is a, like I said, video montage of me simply securing my car wash, heading towards the Speed Pro locale, what the waiting room looked like, and me securing photographs in various locales um, of the proof that I received my installment. And so if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know below and I shall do another follow-up video uh, regarding the remittance of payment and if I partook in any subsequent campaigns, I won't be partaking in the LAX campaign. Um, 
it just doesn't make sense for me uh, specifically but like I said I will be working on doubling my earnings uh, while well, it's working with Uber Eats. So, I thank you kindly for tuning in, beautifully beloved beings. And until next time, stay serene.